Hi and welcome to the Adam Shop channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam and in this screencast we are going to take a look at the auto layout that is part of the features provided by the iOS 6 framework. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to go over there, uh, just click on the storyboard and not use the auto layout just to see, just to explain to you what it does. So I'm just going to go and create a button and put the button over here and while I'm putting the button you can see all these lines that are coming right these blue lines so these are kind of like uh, helping me to where to actually position the button using the X and Y coordinates alright so I put, I put the button over there and now I'm going to run it let's see okay build succeeded and it's going to run I am using uh, Xcode 4.5 it's going to take some time to pop up the simulator and uh, let's see that is a uh, way too slow huh? so auto layout basically uh, we will see uh, that how it will help us to create better layouts which will work in portrait modes which will work in landscape modes all right So here's our button, okay, the same thing, it, we can click it, it appears we're pretty much the same place where we put it. Uh, how about if I rotate it? So I rotate this application into the landscape mode and now the button is actually gone, okay? So we don't have the button, that's kind of weird, right? And if I rotate it again to the portrait mode, we get the button again back. Now the reason the button was lost is that the button is placed using the position so there's some position for the x value and there's some position for the y and you can see that these are the position 160 is the x coordinate and 353 is the y coordinate of course the width and height of the button is 73 and 44 which is by default um, now you can use this auto sizing uh, to basically put the button at certain position but if you have more components then it becomes very very tricky and then you have to actually go down and code and hard code the position that when I'm in the landscape mode I want to put, I want to put the button at a certain position when I'm in the uh, portrait mode I want to set the button in a different position let's go ahead and enable the auto layout so there we go this is a iOS 6 feature so if you want to deploy your app you must you know uh, that's the framework that you should target the iOS 6 so auto layout and I'm just gonna go again and now you see a little bit different things I mean it seems kind of same but as I let it go now you see it's a little bit different things right when you select this you see this line over here that's kind of like the center and you see a constraint over here or a line over here which is like a an eye and over here I mean this is kind of like this so just make it open or open it uh, you'll see a constraint uh, like a, a tree is added or a value is added over there and there are two type of constraints over here this is a center x alignment which is this large line and this is the vertical space which is this so what I'm telling you or what auto layout is suggesting is that you don't really need like if you want to put a button at a certain position then you don't really need the X and Y coordinates it can find out the X and Y coordinate for you because it has certain constraints okay so how is it finding out where to put it on the X location well it's using the center X alignment so go over there and then go and the vertical space so this is the vertical space so when you go in this and you go at the vertical space this so you'll find the button all right Let's go ahead and run this application and see how it changes from or how it changed from the previous application when we were not using the auto layout. So now I'm rotating and you can see the button is actually not moving. So it knows that where to put the button in the landscape position and also in the portrait position. Isn't that awesome? Let's go ahead and put the button right in the center. All right so we have two different constraints over here now added to the button okay we have a center x alignment which is of course this large line that's going and then we have a vertical space and it has a hard-coded value of 186 which is from over here to here all right that's good I'm gonna run this now 
and I will be assuming that uh, the same thing that I did before it should appear right in the center when I rotate hmm but it doesn't it goes down right and the reason of course that it goes down is that the constraint that has been added by default it has a fixed value which is 186 so it will always go down 186 vertical space all right so how can we fix this so you can go to this editor and you can put your own user constraint on it now you have uh, this is align constraint this is arrange and then the pin uh, you can also access these things from over here okay so if I select over here the button uh, this is the alignment and this is the uh, pin if you want to pin it so I'm just gonna say okay um, align it horizontal center in container so it creates a center X alignment okay that's good and I want to also align it vertically vertical center bam all right now you see what happened over here your vertical space which was 186 that was replaced by the center x alignment okay and now it doesn't have any constant values so you can go ahead and run this so when you run it of course you see in the portrait mode it is at the complete center and if you rotate it to the landscape mode it is still in the absolute center position so this is working out good what about if you delete this constraint now this is in blue color which means this is a user constraint so I can delete it hmm that's kind of weird it added an another constraint which is purple in color let's delete that also oh, I can't really delete that oops right oh let's delete this blue one and hmm that's kind of weird because it added another purple constraint so purple constraint so why is it adding a purple constraint and why cannot I delete a purple constraint so the reason is very simple when you're using constraint uh, your your layout manager or whatever it is it, it needs to know something you know some information that will allow it to place the button and these this these are the vital in this the vital keys or vital information that it needs to know okay if it doesn't really know that then there's no way that it can place a button at the position where the button is right now so you know so just uh, you cannot delete that because it is basically required um, let's go ahead and add another button so I'm just gonna add another button over here okay and let's go ahead and change this to something else um, long button title okay and it doesn't really fit over here so what we can do is we can go to editor and we can say size to fit content so it will size up to fit the content there we go right and we can always say like select the two buttons and we can say over here from the pin width equally now width equally means that if you have three or four or five buttons and you do want all the buttons to be of the equal width even if one button has small number of text or a small text which is button over here uh, so this is what you can do okay so now it's pinning basically like this let's go ahead and do another thing uh, to see that how this actually works we are going to use a button click event going to attach it to this button uh, I'm going to say touch up inside okay now this button uh, click has already been implemented right over here okay and I'm just gonna go over here and say this is a X or is it large X I don't, I don't really know but let's go ahead and see what's going on over here all right so let's run this it's kind of running very slow because uh, of Camtasia uh, pretty very very slow oh it actually ran finally okay okay so you see what's going on right now uh, you press a button but it doesn't really 
you know it it doesn't really affect the other one okay let's go ahead and see what's going on so this is a button this is a button let's see the constraints that we have over here we have width constraint for this particular button so I'm just gonna go over here and say size to fit so when you say size to fit it actually fits both of these things okay and now you don't have any constraint for size to fit you have equal width constraints let's actually run it again oh it is running very very slow and see what's going on now isn't that cool that if you have long text if you have a lot of text it's it's automatically going to resize for it usually this doesn't really happen for buttons of course uh, it usually happens for labels that you have a, a lot of text for the labels and uh, you want to uh, you know size the label to the appropriate text and we'll see an example right now of the labels so let's go ahead and delete this button and delete this button also and uh, let's call it veggie table or let's call it tomato okay UI label no it's already added it so I'm just gonna grab one label over here let's put it anywhere okay and I'm just gonna say Roma tomato and actually you know what I'm just gonna go over there to master uh, the, the, the storyboard and turn off the auto layout now so this is what we used to do uh, if I'm you know putting some description of the Roma tomato let's say right so I'm just gonna go over here and add under the label and uh, this is kind of like a description that I'm adding I'm just gonna say the size will be 12 and this will be a description label all right and I will set the size manually because we are not using the uh, auto layout in this case description and we'll set the lines to zero because we can have multiple lines so there's no number of lines right um, let's also connect I think I already have the description label over here and we're going to connect it to the description that's okay now in the view did load this is the description label and just gonna to comment on this uh, description label we are assigning some text uh, and then calling size to fit okay so let's run it and see what actually happens when you assign the text so it, it, it appears okay now the only reason it appears okay is that we're we are sizing it using the size to fit okay uh, let's go ahead and add another label so this is a description label I'm just gonna add one more label over here which will be all right uh, let's say over here and going to resize it a little bit to 12 the same one and this will be additional in formation okay so this is additional information I'm just going to drag it over here and this is of course we used to do that uh, and then lines to zero that's okay uh, need still need to connect the additional information to this all right so this is connected and then go ahead and uncomment this code there we go and then run it now you might be thinking that it should appear okay but whoa what happened right well uh, it's appearing I think it's, it's it's actually appearing the all the thing all the text is appearing but it doesn't know the, what position to put the text on where what is the start position like Y coordinate okay and this I mean this problem you can ease I mean you can solve it's not really easy to solve but you can solve and it becomes very time-consuming uh, because you basically what you do is you have to put you have to like this one label the additional label you have to set the frame to start at a particular position where this uh, description label ends so it gets very very uh, I won't say complicated but I would say it becomes a headache if you have let's say 12 labels okay and if you're building like kind of these kind of information application for your iPhone then yes you will 
you will deal with more labels. So let's see if we can convert this using auto layout. Uh, so I'm just going to say, okay, use auto layout. So let's see the constraints that we have. We have a height constraint and we really don't need the height constraint, right? So uh, I'm just going to go over here, editor, and I'm going to say size to fit content. Now it becomes very, very small, right? Um, let's actually use this, pin the width. So we are going to pin the width and it says 87. Uh, I don't like 87, so I'm just going to go over here and make this 290 so that it pretty much reaches the end. You can see that it does not have a uh, height constraint now. So let's run the application again and it appears okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's see if we can remove this one, like size to fit. And it still works okay, pretty good, right? What about the next one? Um, now this becomes a little bit I won't say tricky, but uh, so this one, this label, here we go. Do we have a height constraint over here? So we do have a height constraint over here. So the first thing is to you need to remove this height constraint. I'm just going to say size to fit constraint, size to fit, and then this and this. Um, if I can say width equally. Okay, so we have the equal width constraint on this one. You can see if you select equal width, so they will have the equal widths, okay? Um, there's no height constraint on any one of those. So let's run it again, and bingo. Isn't that beautiful? You tell me, right? Um, I've written a lot of code, like in my one of my applications. I mean, it's not really online, but I've written a lot of code to just to fix the, these things, like, okay, this ends over here so the additional information must start from at this point and this I mean this is like a lot of lot of lines of code and just think of it if you have uh, this is kind of like a about Roma tomato this is additional information you have how to plant Roma tomato uh, pesticides uh, other plants or other companions and so many other things that you can add and it's pretty apparent at this point that using the auto layout is certainly going to benefit you when you're building these kinds of applications hope you like this it was a little bit long um, you know a video but I hope you like it if you want to donate don't donate me Roma tomatoes but if you want to donate don't uh, my cricket highlights huh? uh, go to my charity water dot org slash awesome sharp okay this is a charity uh, campaign that I started and I need your help to finish up this campaign the campaign goal is actually five thousand dollars and uh, just remember this URL my charity water dot org slash awesome sharp and uh, you will also find the link on the YouTube channel if you go to my YouTube channel it will be on the right hand side uh, and this basically is a very nice campaign it basically gives water to uh, people who, who really needs water and, and I think if you're watching my screencast you are actually fortunate enough uh, that you can make a difference in other people's life so I really appreciate if you go over there and donate mycharitywater.org slash awesome sharp okay that's pretty much it i hope you like this video and thank you very much and stay tuned for much more